When we change our mindsets, we can change our outcomes. Save our lives from sadness, depression, and anxiety, thus giving us the freedom to live the life we want. Hi, I'm Stuart Haskin, founder of Get Save, and your host of the Movement for Change podcast. Hi, I'm back with Jack today, and I asked him what he wanted to talk about, and he said polyamorous relationships. And I said, poly what? And it's open relationships, which I came to find out. So let's hear what Jack has to say about it, because I'm very interested. Hi, Jack. Welcome back to the next episode, which I'm excited about uh, <laughs> today. Um, yeah, it's good to see you. How you been? Yeah, very well, uh, sir. That was a very good last week. Uh, we had a good episode on, on the relationship. I think uh, there's so many other subjects to cover here. So it's, it's good to meet up and uh, get things out in the open so people don't think that they're the only one experiencing something like this or they feel this way. So yeah, it's great. I'm so one, happy. yeah. One disclaimer to the audience is that we have a series of these, so you may listen to something and go, "Well, they didn't talk about this." We've talked about it somewhere, <laughs> so maybe you know, check out other series because we've had uh, a friend of mine actually popped in the one and the probably five into it. You know, five other episodes we had already done, and go, "What about this?" Well, we talked about that in two and three, but we'll try and you know, kind of recap maybe each episode a little bit if we can we're just like you said rep- jack had mentioned repetition is good so yeah, for sure all right so what's our topic today well you know i was uh, i was thinking about the relationships and what i find uh, many times that um, uh, there's a there's a, a sector of people that uh, involved in more than one relationship um in uh, even with the committed relationship so they have a primary relationship and they um, have uh, other partners in their lives. And uh, I had a very good description uh, one time where the person says, I have like two operating systems in my mind. One is Mac, one PC. So Excellent. when I go, that's <laughs> Mac and I, <laughs> and, I have, and I have a relationship and I feel safe. But, but when I come home, that's my partner. I want to be with him. I don't want to be with anybody else. So, and, and there are some people that uh, uh, find additional relationships with their relationship intact for emotional support, for physical support. Um, so it's it's quite common, uh, but it's uh, very difficult to talk about and many people just don't know anything about it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, I always, human nature is difficult. I don't think, what is there, one animal that's monogamous, you know, that just stays one with one partner? Well, yeah. uh, Starks, uh, Starks uh, also uh, monogamous. There's bird monogamous, there's some, mammals monogamous yeah so so like when you're saying some out of how many (laughs) millions of animals so it is a it's a it's a process you know it's it's something else so i don't think it's i could see creating connection and and not being what i'm deficient but just something different as well and and coming home to a safe place as well so let's hear your what you had a name for it what'd you call it it's uh those relationships are called Poly uh, Amory relationships. Okay. And there is a very good book. If somebody wants to read up on this, there is a very good book, good book which is foundational in that uh, area. It's called More Than Two. Oh, More Than Two? Yeah, More Than Two. And um, uh, it's available. Uh, and it's, it gives you a basic uh, uh, a standard, shall we say, how to work uh, in that realm. And the reason is because there's... Uh, there's a primary relationship that could be primary relationship and uh, there could be maybe a, a multiple relationship that considered uh, as important. Uh, but many times people who have polyamory relationship, they would uh, have uh, time with their second partner and they would uh, come back home to the primary relationship. And uh, there's many reasons for it. Some is the uh, lifestyle selection, uh, some of it because of the uh, something's missing in the marriage and uh, their partners both, both agree that that's a good way to approach it um for you, for each couple, you see a lot of a lot of couples coming into you living uh, yeah, can, yeah. can we call it a lifestyle is that a proper term for it is that this well, I life? Would say, yeah that's a lifestyle and it's a difficult lifestyle because it's hard to talk about it so you can't say it to anybody because many people won't understand it they'll judge it for sure Right. So the and and you may be in a in a prominent position in your job in in, in your community. So it's it's, it's hard to even uh, bring it to, to the table. But that's a life that they want and that they both agree. Partners both agree that this is a safe 
um, and, um, and and both uh, can uh, experience this for a long period of time. It's it's not a uh, it's not all about sex. There is a lot of emotional involvement, and uh, uh, yeah, it's it's part of part of the relationship that we have and a part of the uh, uh, things that couple experience. Can you? I don't. I don't know if you've had this conversation, but you read the book. So how does this conversation come up? You just come home one day and go, you know what we should do? <laughs> we should have a, another partner. I mean, I, it seems like a really f- fine line to walk on, you know, to to bring up without being, you know, kicked out of the house or something. I, I don't know. I don't know how that conversation would even start. No, the- and uh, it, it starts different ways. So let's say if one partner has already had the polyamorous relationships in the past and they are in a new relationship, they may bring it up and say that uh, this is what my past is and uh, maybe at some point in the future we can consider it. And uh, maybe a year later they decide to try it out and see if it works for them. If it works, it's great. If it doesn't work, they protect each other. And, and that's the thing that happens when, when, you, when a partner starts a new relationship outside of their relationship. Number one... Um, everything needs to be open. And that means people, there's no secrets there. And also uh, there are clear boundaries of what is allowed, was not allowed, right? And uh, uh, some partner may request that there's no intimacy. Some partners can say that it's okay intimacy, but you can't be in our house or or you can be someplace else. So there's a there's almost like a contract, an agreement, what boundaries are set with the secondary relationships. Yeah, you know, it was a weird thing. It's probably about three years, four years ago. Within the matter of a week, two people disclosed to me that they lived the an open lifestyle, that they would, mm-hmm. in the sense of, I guess, swingers. They would go to parties, different things. And it, it was just a strange week because it was a gentleman that was older, for sure. And then uh, another individual that was not as old, but and how he, the older couple were had been in the relationship for 14, 15 years and said, Something has to change. And they decided to try this, and it worked very well for them for, I don't even know how long, 14 years. They said some of the best friends, weddings, funerals. The other person, it just organically grew. And, and But I, my point is that there was distinct rules. Uh, yeah, I remember yeah. uh, one person telling me, this man, there was only one person, one woman he couldn't be with out of all the women around. Of course, he chose that one and then ruined the relationship because that was part of their boundaries and he broke the rules. But yeah, it was so there are really strict rules, is what. Yeah, uh, there, it's a little bit different. Uh, uh, the swinger is quite different than polyamory. In polyamory, you have a committed relationship, a secondary relationship. This is not where you go and, and you meet other people and uh, have a, a um, sexual relationship within the context of the larger group, maybe, or, or swapping the partners. This is more of a committed relationship as a secondary relationship. And uh, the secondary uh, relationship becomes part of your relationship. And in, in some cases, uh, the secondary partner is invited for dinners and for lunches. And and uh, and the other, the other thing is a lot of times the secondary partner needs to be in the relationship. They don't go just if the secondary partner is single, that may not be an option for them. So, so the secondary partner needs to be in their own relationship, in a safe relationship, and only then we are going to have a relationship together. Do, so, the, do their partners meet the other? Like, okay, let's. Yeah. A couple yeah. decides that this gentleman wants to have a relationship or with this female. Does yeah. they yeah. meet with the husband of the other? lady or do yeah, they all- it, could be. it could be the people meet together they go for lunch together they go for dinner they get to know each other uh, sometimes a uh, partner says no i don't want to know who you who you're dating just be safe and uh, let me know if you need anything from me and uh, um you know if you need a, if you need a house um, for on this date i'll be out on this date there's arrangements and and that's what makes it a little bit difficult in the polyamory relationship that scheduling becoming difficult if, you, if you're already a busy person and you have one partner, it's, it's, it, and you need to schedule the other partner in also. So that becomes a little bit tricky. And if you have both partners have their um, secondary relationships, that becomes a little tricky. But, uh, but your partner can tell you what's the limitations of your relationship. They can share with you, this is the safest things for me. Well, I just, I mean, jealousy is just, uh, it's a human behavior in all, all of us. Some have it a lot, some don't have it as much. 
I just, you know, I, I guess the rules help it from creating that, you know, because of, hey, you want to spend more time with, you know, a, a husband, you want to spend more time with that guy than me, or you're spending quality time with them and coming home for kid work with me. You know, I mean, so right. it seems like. And and sometimes if, if the primary relationship has difficulties, um, what uh, we need to do is to address those difficulties, because most of the time when I see clients, is the primary relationship that have having difficulty, um, not the secondary relationship. And uh, in, in those cases, we ask them to slow down on secondary relationships, maybe to stop them for a while until we can resolve all the difficulties between themselves. Once we resolve the difficulties with couples, they can resume because now they secure their attached, they're connected, they care about each other, they feel safe, and they can resume whatever activities they had before that. Um, uh, jealousy does come up. And what's in the nice about the in polyamory relationships is that there's no secrets. No secrets means that if you're jealous, you share it with your partner. I'm a little bit jealous here, you know, uh, I miss you. And then, then you arrange the schedule. That's, that's, that's where the thing is. Uh, but you also uh, keep in mind that uh, the relationship where one partner has multiple additional partner, but the other one doesn't. They're not interested in it. There could be a relationship. And you talked a little bit how to introduce uh, introduce the subject into, into your marriage or into, into your relationship. Um, some people do it uh, uh, before they get married, uh, during the date, uh, dating, they uh, share with that. And they talk about the need for this. Um, some people uh, uh, have physical limitations and uh, their partner is looking for somebody to meet uh, so that they can fulfill their uh, physical needs. So the, I think the, the key here is collaboration, open collaboration and finding out what the other person's limits are, uh, protect those limits, keep your primary partner safe at all the times. Uh, don't violate the boundaries of the agreement, how you're going to be with the other person. And as long as this is all taken into consideration and, and you care about your partner, your wish to make sure they're safe, uh, then the relationship can last for a long time. Everybody has the right to be safe. At Get Safe, we believe in four keys of leadership, empathy, integrity, inclusion, and community. That last piece, the community, is essential for us here at Get Safe. We believe in taking care of the community. If we care for something, nurture it, we become part of its growth. Get Safe is an agency that empowers a wide variety of groups, clubs, agencies, workplaces, all that make up our community that we are proud of. When we change our community mindset, we can positively change our outcomes towards a safer future with one another. All right, are you, when they come to you, are you like a mediator or a referee or are they just are discussing just their own couple problems or do they also yeah. talk? Most of the time it's their own a couple's problems. I don't, we don't discuss uh, problems with the secondary relationship. You see, the, this is the thing in the, in the multiple relationships. Let's say you have a primary relationship and, and it's, uh, it's very strong. And then there's a breakup in the secondary relationship. And the partner is suffering from that breakup. But the primary partner uh, may have difficulty using them because they're not responsible for this breakup. So in a way, your partner can go through a grieving process and the primary relationship, they can help them to go through a grieving process, but it becomes very um, difficult for partner. Yeah, that would take uh, take a special person, I think, to, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I could see it because, you know, your partner's hurting and even though it's hurting for another, I, I you know, I, I look at a lot of times how we have these walls up with everything. And at the end of the day, if your partner is hurting over someone else, it's hard on you, but they're just still hurting. And it's, you yeah, know, yeah. You, you would help them if they broke their arm, if they hurt, they, if they had some kind of illness, you would help them. So I could see, you know, if you could separate yourself from that, what the, the cause of it and just help them walk through something. Yeah. And, and I think uh, focusing on your partner's needs, uh, not uh, how the needs arise is my more important. And for both partners to feel safe to come back home and know they're still loved and cared for is also important. Um, it's not a lifestyle for everyone. 
Um, uh, some people are very uh, uh, strict on this is monogamous, rela monogamous relationship. There's nothing I need to do outside of this relationship, no matter what happens in our relationship. Uh, and some people are more open and say that uh, uh, some things are missing in our relationship and my partner may not wi be willing to give it to me or no interest uh, to, to give me something that I need. Uh, and um, then the conversation may start. Can I get fulfilled uh, in, in some other ways? But I want to reassure you, I'm right here. I don't want to leave you. I want to stay with you forever. No. And and that's a difficult conversation. It's always a difficult conversation, especially for people who uh, who haven't done this before. It's very hard to absorb it and internalize it and, and make sense out of it uh, because our society has... Uh, taught us that monogamy, monogamy is the only approved way of having relationships. Which is, by the divorce statistics, not super, going super well, <laughs> because they're fairly... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 49% uh, uh, divorce statistics is not very good. Because I thought it was actually over 50, but all right, 49 is better than I had thought. I thought it was like 55, but... But, but would this be considered an open relationship or it's not an open one? Because I, I know there's studies on open relationships, how the lasting effects and, you know, how well they work. Or is this a little different than an open? It's a little bit different because most of the time the secondary relationships are also commit relationships. They're not, they're not, you know, friends with benefits. Uh, they're more of you find a partner that you committed to and you work together and you you stay together for a long period of time um whereas open relationship is is a little bit different uh, yeah you know, the com commitment there this is an old study but i heard that which i i didn't look up because i wasn't sure what we're talking about today but yeah it was like 35 percent of open relationships failed in a sense, you know, and or it might even be more, but just because eventually someone got jealous or someone maybe broke the rules or, or something happened. But do you find these relationships last longer because it's pretty structured? Um, they do last for a while. Yes. And there's a big community and online community that you can reach out to for help and how to navigate through this. Uh, but there's also... Uh, the big part of it is always reassuring your partner that they're still safe, that they're still loved, that they're still cared for. It's reassuring your partner that uh, the secondary relationship is not going to tear you apart. Um, and then when your partner gets jealous or doesn't feel safe, it's, it's for you to be there for your partner. It goes both ways, for you to be there for your partner and help them through this moment. It's, it's, a, it's an adventure, life adventure that both partners go on. And, and and sometimes one partner will fall behind and the other one needs to pull him up and, and vice versa. Uh, so as far as the length, yes, there are some that lasted for 20 years, 30 years, uh, relationships that uh, last a lifetime. And there are some that, uh, like in any other relationship, break up in, in, in a matter of years. Um, but it's, it takes hard work. It takes hard yeah, work. Yeah, it seems work. like and, a, lot of, a lot of validation. <laughs> but also, have you seen many where the secondary relationship becomes a primary to someone and that's probably where the end is near correct i mean i, mean, I haven't seen that i haven't seen that oh. because there's lots of check and balances it's quite possible it's quite possible but secondary relationship but remember that's a reason secondary relationship needs to be with a partner who is also has committed to relationship that's you may you may feel at, attracted to them to the point that you want to leave your partner but they have their own relationship and they may not be ready and don't, don't want don't want to go there because they're committed to their partner. And that's where the commitment is very important. And the commitment is that we are the relationship. Right. We are the ones who hold the, our family together. Um, but all the other relationships, they're supplementary. Important, but they're supplementary. But like in any in any situation, there could be uh, there could be complications. Yes. And we have enough life and enough, enough uh, uh, complications in our life. You know, adding this one, it's a, it's a big task. So before before you go that, to that road, that's a big task. It, it involves a lot of work. Well, I'm just thinking now your phone's going to blow up and go, Jack, I want to bring this up to my partner, male or female. Can you sit there and help us set the rules? I mean, can they come in and say, we need some help? We're, we're, we're thinking about this since you've had some experience with couples. And they come in and right, right, and and that's what happens a lot of times. Uh, a lot of times, a couple come to therapy, 
with one's partner has agenda of disclosing this information, but they don't know how. You know, the, the first thing I would recommend always to get the more than two book, uh, more than two, and it, it's a good book to start. And I would, uh, I would also, uh, you know, if you want to bring it up to your partner, I would um, get this book and just let them know that I read this book and it's kind of felt comfortable for me. And I wonder what do you think? But it's it's a tentative, it's a very tentative place, and you have to just navigate softly and gently around the partner's uh, concerns. And, and again, there are some partners that say that we're going to live together and have children without being polyamorous, and then when the children is gone, we'll we'll switch back to that. Um, to, to that provide the consistency to the family. Uh, depending on the situations, each one of them is a little bit different, but also there's an overall arching uh, umbrella over it that to create safety for everybody involved. I don't know if you have this. What's, do you have the definition of polyamorous by chance? Or? Yeah, that's exactly what the book name is, when you have more than one partner. Oh, is it? Okay. In the, in the commit relationship, yes. And it's more than two or more than two yeah because more than two means three right <laughs> right so you have a primary relationship yeah and then you have that's that's two people and you add another. oh okay i was thinking and, primary secondary third dairy <laughs> so when you say more than two anyway all right because that wouldn't seem like a handful for sure yeah there's a there's two people who wrote this book which is franklin uh vox and uh, eve rickert and uh, they're the ones who established the foundation for the, for that work. Because what happened, uh, they call it ethical polyamory. And ethical po polyamory means that we are completely open with each other and we're safe with each other. If, if anything happens, we can figure things together. Um, and it's much better than infidelity because there's no secrets involved in it. Yeah, there's nothing, no surprise, and it's there's yeah. not, not that hurt coming as long as everyone's truly open to it. Because I could see someone, one partner going, "All right, if that's what they want, I'll I'll try it." So that's not really on board. You got to kind of be on board, and because there are people who just want to be in their their space, you know, that one person, good, bad, indifferent, whatever it is. That's because that's how we were taught, right. You know, and I don't know if it's true because I have people like, oh, my parents were together for 50 years. And I'm going, we don't know everything that happened between you. <laughs> we, 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 we don't know. Yeah. We don't know. And, and, and a lot of times parents tend to uh, hide things from their children because they don't want to hurt their children. They don't want their children to feel uncomfortable. Um, in, the, in polyamory relationships, uh, a lot of people feel that they have more love to give and they need that outlet and, and they feel compelled. Uh, to have multiple partners and um, sometimes it's not a choice it's just a way of being well well it's we're at that point which we could go another four hours on this and especially this would have been a good live show there jack yeah great <laughs> but let's uh maybe give a couple tips i'm thinking the book's a big tip uh anything else that you would suggest that people are kind of throwing it out in over coffee over a beer yeah, so one big tip is uh, learn more about this. This is a big deal. Uh, when I say big deal, uh, don't get surprised or shocked or try to experiment on your own. And what I find in people who think about this and they experiment on their own without uh, being part of the community and understanding the rules, understanding how things set up, all of the things that you're going to go through to hurt your relationship have already been done. So there's no reason to do this from scratch, learn on other people's mistakes so that when you try polyamory relationship, it's safe uh, for both of you and you can safely get in and get out of this uh, um, and, and you still have your primary relationship intact. Yeah, I think in the other part, like you said, it's it's not our normal function. So dealing with that aspect with uh, what people may think is probably the other thing. And, you know, obviously it's probably a well-kept secret with a couple you know, I mean, right. in our world right now probably too much judgment out there but if it's well yeah and then, and then like you said that uh, it, it, we can find put a little label saying it's not normal but it's probably societal norm that we're talking about the how society looks at it for people who are in polyamory relationship for them this is normal this is normal there's nothing there's nothing abnormal about that 
and then they they fulfill their life and and, and they they're productive members of our community they do a lot of things that everybody else does so uh i would probably say that there are different views and different lifestyles and then that's the lifestyles we don't have to judge if that's what works for other people that more power to them well it's that decision i just real quick i just remember a female that i knew uh, years back and she always said that if she lived in a different part of the state you know maybe northern california versus here she would probably be in a relationship with a woman but out here at the time you know it's being everything's becoming more open now but it was very a lot of judgment and a lot of difficulty explaining the things to well, friends and parents so it is that understanding that yeah we, we don't have but well it's even now in 2023 uh talk about polyamory in the party is is not very attractive subject yeah yeah uh, and people will probably get shocked or feel uncomfortable being next to you um but that's a uh, part of life and uh, that's why they uh they have their community and then they're able to communicate in that area where everybody's accepting and and not judging that's great well very interesting topic, Jack, uh, and I'm glad you we talked about it because it may help people at least understand what they may be thinking. Yeah. But, all right. And the book is, again, uh, you said More Than Two? Yes, the book is More Than Two by, by Franklin Vox and Eve Recret. All right. Well, available in the stores, yeah. Yeah, stores. Are they still bookstores? Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, a few, all right? Yeah, digital <laughs> <Yeah>. stores. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, Jack, thank you for helping us change mindsets and sometimes in saving lives and on that edge to either move forward to an amazing relationship or kind of hang out. So I'll well, see good. you next episode. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Sounds great, Stuart. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to our podcast, Movement for Change. We hope that our discussion has left you with new perspectives and insights that can help you change mindsets and save lives. Please visit us at GetSafeUSA.com for resources, trainings, and if there's a topic you want to hear about or you have questions, please email us at info at GetSafeUSA.com. Together, we can make the change we want to see.